Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brendan Kreit. I'm the state senator for the 3rd Essex District, representing the communities of Lynn, Linfield, Marblehead, Nahant, Saugus, and Swampscott. We're here today to discuss the planned closure of the Lynn commuter rail station. We, as the Lynn legislative delegation, including Representative Pete Capano, Representative Dan Cahill, along with Mayor Nicholson, the Lynn City Council, represented here by Councilor Brian Field, and Congressman Moulton's office, stand united in opposition to any unnecessary service cuts for our community. We stand united in the belief that safety must be the number one priority always. But we also stand united in the belief that we can run a safe system and treat riders with the respect that they deserve. On July 12th, the MBTA issued a press release that the Lynn commuter rail station will be closing on July 25th, that is this upcoming Monday, to address safety concerns in addition for future construction and design work for our new station as well as a new commuter rail garage. We requested a meeting on site to review the safety concerns. And this past Wednesday, all of us joined the general manager, his leadership team, and other team employees to take a tour of the station to determine whether or not it was safe. Again and again and again, we asked about the safety concerns. And the end result was that we were told that this station is safe, it is safe for ridership today, and that there are, while concerns about long-term issues, currently we can run a commuter rail station here as it was done previously. With this new information, we requested that the MBTA postpone the planned closure and keep the station open until the design phase is completed and the construction work is ready to begin on a new station. And I'm pleased to say that just one hour ago, we received a call from the general manager, Steve Poftak, who agreed to grant us our request to keep the station open. They have committed to continue to monitor any safety concerns and reserve the right that should safety concerns come up, that the station may be closed at that time, which we as a delegation in the city and the federal and our congressmen all agree, again, that safety must be the number one priority. So today, to our riders, we announced that the closure has been postponed, that on Monday you can continue to use this service. We appreciate the MBTA listening to our feedback about the impacts this would have on riders, but we still have concern about the mitigation when the station does close. Currently, the options they've given us are either to catch a train, sorry, excuse me, catch a bus to Wonderland Station, or to drive to Swampscott Station to board on their commuter rail line. And when they do arrive to Swampscott Station, they can be expected to be charged a higher fare in Zone 3. This is a slap in the face to our riders, telling them that they can drive to Swampscott if they can, if they have access to a car, to pay more for a less accessible service. We again stand here united with the demand for better mitigation options. And when this closure does begin, we will be closing this station to 100,000 working class people in the city of Lynn, an environmental justice community, majority minority city, a city where our residents may not have flexible work schedules, they may not have access to a car to get to another commuter rail station. At a time when we're trying to bring riders back into our system, we are simultaneously not giving them the information and the options that they need and deserve to be able to plan their commute. We share the frustration of the riders, and we'll continue to push for better options for them and safe options for our commuter rail. With that, I would now like to introduce the mayor of the city of Lynn, Jared Nicholson. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Crichton. Uh, I would like to thank the MBTA for the announcement this afternoon about postponing the closure. This is a positive development. I'd like to thank Senator Crichton, Representative Pano, Representative Cahill for their leadership on this, uh, Congressman Moulton's office, and my colleagues uh, in local government, the city council. As Senator Crichton said, safety absolutely has to be the number one priority. And we are in full agreement and support of that concept, and we very much appreciate everybody's focus on safety as being the number one priority. 
Once safety has been addressed, as we understand and it has based on the meeting that we had earlier this week, continuing service to the city of Lynn has to be prioritized as well. Hundreds of our residents, thousands of our residents rely on the stream service every day, going to work, going to doctor appointments, getting to school. They've built their lives around it. And we understand better than anyone, this station needs to be redone. You can just look around, and we know that this station is in desperate need of upgrades. Frankly, it's embarrassing for us as a community that's in this, it's in this poor shape as it is. And so we appreciate and are grateful for the T's investment. And we understand that there will be major inconveniences during construction. That's part of this. But absolutely stranding our riders without providing any alternative would in no way just be simply an inconvenience. It would be an insult and a reckless desertion of the city of Lincoln, if that's what ends up happening. A major inconvenience, which as, again, we would understand and be happy to deal with, would be being pushed to one of the alternatives that we've discussed with the team. Some, something like a shuttle to another station, a temporary platform being built at, at a nearby station or somewhere nearby in this community that's accessible. Some kind of phase construction that we understand would extend the timeline, but that would allow us to leave part of the station open, or some combination of those alternatives that we've been discussing with the team. And what is so frustrating about this situation is that the MBTA is clearly capable of offering those alternatives. They're concerned about extending the timeline and the impact on their budget. But if you offer a serious transit service, I believe that you have to offer reasonable mitigation during large construction projects. And you have to budget for that in the plan. We want to help them work through any other hurdles that they have. But we need a commitment from them. A failure to offer any kind of mitigation would be shockingly ill-considered. And it would seriously undercut the riders who have built their lives around their station and a city that was hit hard during the pandemic that is ready for long, yearned for transit-oriented development of exactly the kind that this commonwealth desperately needs. Our frustration that you see here is not new. It's been built over decades of disinvestment in this community and our transit options in the environmental justice forum. It's boiling over now when traffic on Wane is returning to pre-pandemic levels, the blue line is inconsistent, and the Sunder Tunnel is about to be closed. We're also not just complaining. We are offering real alternatives as partners. We want to be partners, but we're not backing down that a complete shutdown of our only T station is completely unacceptable. We appreciate the MBTA's willingness to work with us on this and are remain hopeful for a positive resolution. Thank you again to everybody who's working on this and uh, we'd love like to hear from Representative Carlos. Thank you, Mayor Nicholson. I don't want to repeat what was just said. I stand with the Mayor, the State Senator, the City Council, Representative Cahill. I just want to talk a little bit about our dealings with the MBTA and then mention a few things. The MBTA has been very frustrating to work with. As a newer rep, I come in with the expectations of excitement for electric, electrification of the rail, a new ferry, and talk about what future transportation will be like. But working with the T, I found out that they have managed to diminish expectations, and that is what they do. If you want to talk about the future of transportation, they are the last people you want to talk to when you should be going to them for the future. If we think that this is a victory, we are fooling ourselves. Half an hour ago, I got a call from the senator that they, they will be leaving the station open. When I come here today, I see a fence over there where they, are, where they were supposed to be working with us. They have already made the decision to close it down. And this is the type of thing we've been dealing with with the MBTA for a while. There's been a few suggestions made, one by the House Chair of Transportation to do away with the MBTA, that maybe 
maybe they've outlived their useful purpose and we need to think about a new transportation department, I am on board. We need leadership that can talk about what the future of transportation should look like. Not arguing about mitigation efforts, trying to get a city of 100,000 people uh, a ride. In, you go to the transportation people. We shouldn't be having to go to them to do that. So I want to thank everyone for being here today. And I, I, I appreciate the, the difficulties of running an aging transportation system that's been underfunded for decades. But I'm sad to say that the disinvestment of the past is continuing today. And I'm extremely disappointed and frankly angry that the Lynn Station was going to be closed for three years without any mitigation options for Lynn residents who will be disproportionately impacted and inconvenienced by its closure. Not only will the station re would remain closed during the design and planning phase of this project, but no meaningful efforts were made by the MBTA to provide temporary parking, a shuttle, open the Riverworks stations for public use, maybe open up the ferry again. In fact, mitigation wasn't even part of the original budget for this project. And that tells me that it wasn't even a consideration from the beginning. And in my opinion, that is just unacceptable. Going forward, I know myself, the state, the federal delegation, the mayor, the city council, we will do everything we can to push for alternative options for residents impacted during the station and garage closure. Our community deserves to have safe, clean, affordable, and reliable station and a transportation system that works. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Pilato, uh, Mayor Nicholson. Uh, obviously, you can see the passion here felt by all of us. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for coming here on this uh, really hot day, and we welcome it up to any questions you may have to offer any of us at this time. Uh, when, did they give any indication of when it would be closing? Like you said, so there, there's no date certain. Uh, they will continue to monitor it. Again, if there are safety concerns, we would want the station to be and those concerns to be addressed. But for now, the station is open, and we hope it remains so as long as we can safely do that, you know, until we have proper mitigation in place, and until we have a clear idea of what the timelines and scope of the overall reconstruction project will be. Feel free, if anyone wants to jump in, come up. Can you speak more to some of the accommodations or how you would like to help some of the people who are really trying to So I mean, some of the options we've talked about are pretty simple, things that the T's already doing in other stations. Uh, so if you close the station, you want to make sure that they can get on that same line. They had offered the Swanson station. We had suggested a shuttle, a low-cost shuttle, it's a short trip. Handicap accessible you know, vehicles, get folks where they need to go. Again, that was denied. Uh, the other alternative that we're exploring is a temporary platform. It can be done so cheap, cheaply uh, in, a, in an efficient way. Uh, we're working that out with them now. Either of those options, or both of those options, uh, would help to keep the station open once, I'm sorry, help keep service open once uh, work is to begin. But we, we, the last thing we want is to drive by or walk by or see this station sitting here as it is today, safe, without service. Thank you, I hope that answers your question. Um, can I just have something slightly unrelated? Um, I know that the Lynn Station was Yeah, I, you know, I have to work with my, my co-chair in the House to establish the scope of our next oversight hearing. I imagine there will be more hearings to come after the next one based on the continued incidents. Obviously, horrific uh, images and the stories from passengers, our thoughts are, are with them after having to experience a traumatic evacuation of a train on fire on a bridge over a waterway. You know, everyone has seen the images. Uh, that will play a big role, but there, we, we barely scratched the surface in the first oversight here. We have a lot more work to do. We have a lot more documents to review, and that will be coming soon. We'll have more information. This is a question to all of you. Um, do we have assurances this time the structure will be maintained when they build their new one, and how do we hold the T accountable to that? We expect and believe that the city of Flynn will get a state-of-the-art 
commuter rail station uh, upon the completion of this project. And we're, again, we're excited about it. And, you know, we certainly see it as our responsibility to, to support our riders in seeking a safe uh, and accessible service. And I know that uh, we have a delegation that, that fights for that every day on Beacon Hill and, and, are, and are lucky to have uh, leaders with, with particular passion for, for transportation uh, doing that. So I, 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 I think that we're excited about that future station. Our, our, our focus here is about uh, how do we get there in a way that we think is respectful to our riders. You know, the, the, the Senator uh, laid out, I think, what I, th what I think are really two compelling mitigation options in a, in a shuttle, uh, in a temporary platform somewhere else. We are, the city is a partner to the MTA in figuring out how to make that work. Uh, and you know the, the, the other dynamic there is, is how to how and when to close the station in a way that fits into the overall construction and mitigation plan. And we think that you can combine those alternatives. If, if it's going to take some time to get the temporary platform set up and going because of other uh, hurdles, then maybe you can run the, the shuttle just for that period of time, which reduces the cost of the entire mitigation. But we need a commitment that there will be mitigation as part of the. Thank you. So there were a number of folks there, and it wasn't that a decision was made Wednesday. I mean, I can say the general manager that I would forget names if I, if I started to list them off. Um, but it was folks that deal with the rail division that you know, specific to the station, experts that know the concerns around it. So, I mean, the review, you know, we, we walked through. There's, there's obviously wear and tear if you're, you're unable to go to the platform now, uh, that there are things that they need to regularly address, um, but they can do so with I mean, it's just practice that they've had for a while, and it does not interrupt safety. Uh, I, I've told that they have had subsequent reviews in the days since, even as, as late as today. And uh, as of right now, it is it's deemed safe, and we have confidence that uh, folks can safely board uh, here in the Thank you. Could you speculate as to why these structures have been neglected by the MBTA? Just, was it a budget issue? Or? Could you repeat the question? Could you speculate as to a reason why these structures have been neglected by the MBTA? I think that's a great question for the MBTA. I can give you, you know, my response. I just think if you look around the city, um, speaking for myself here, uh, Lynn is, well, I was a city councilman in Lynn for 15 years, and the major, one of the major complaints was the blight, open storefronts, empty buildings, and if you look around, if you ride around the city today, you can see that most of those shops are built. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have is parking, because there's a lot of activity going on. The only places that are blighted are MBTA properties. Look at the graffiti under the bridge. Look at the vegetation knocking down the fences along the commuter rail. Trees falling into people's yard. Trying to get somebody to come here and clean up sometimes is hard to do. So I think that's a great question for the MBTA. And it's not for lack of effort from anybody from the city or the state delegation. We try to get them to come here. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It's like this issue here. They're saying they're leaving the station open Monday, but the fence is up. Is it going to be open? Is it going to be closed? These are the types of things that we have to deal with, and th those are the types of things that I personally find very frustrating. If I'm talking to you, I expect an answer that I can understand, that I can explain to a constituent. I don't always get that. And one of the, one of the com complaints that I get is from maintenance of MBTA property. And I don't have a satisfactory answer, but I wish that you would call them and ask them. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you again uh, to everyone for taking the time to come here today. Uh, if there's any follow-up, feel free to reach out to any of our offices. And again, just to be clear, the station is open for service on, on Monday uh, to all of our audience. Thank you.